All right, so BH has a comment here. He asks, or I think it's a question. Um, tell me if I'm understanding this incorrectly, but he says, I believe the whole Bible, but J man cannot the most high or co equal to the most high because Messiah tells this followers that only the Father in heaven know the day and hour. Also, Messiah tells them that no one is good but the Father. Alright, so hopefully I read that correctly. Now, if I understand it, he's saying that no man, um, or I'm sorry, he's saying that man cannot be the Most High or co equal to the Most High. Because Messiah tells the followers that only the Father in heaven knows the day and hour. In other words, uh, the Messiah is saying that he's he doesn't know, and that Messiah also says that no one is good but the Father. Okay, so <clears throat> let me try to help clear this up. So Jesus says, "No man knows the day or the hour." Not even the sun knows. All right, so let me find a verse here. But of that day and hour no knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Right there, Mark 13. But of the day, but of that day and that hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the sun capital S so there's no doubt who he's referring to but the father now in the context of the son Jesus is the son and that is the man Christ Jesus so let's confirm that now this is a great mystery <clears throat> I understand that man Christ let's see if I no I don't think that's gonna work is it 58 let's get specific here Um, let me find a verse here uh, okay so the point I'm making here is that Jesus Christ um, was there's the man Jesus Christ All right. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. So this is how I view it, and maybe this will help you, I don't know. But so you got God, the Father, which is in heaven. Then you have God coming down on earth, manifest in the flesh, and that man is Jesus now Jesus also is God keep that in mind because God is manifest in the flesh all right and so as God in the flesh he what Jesus is saying here is that he doesn't even know only the Father which is in heaven knows now Jesus is God Almighty but while he's in the flesh he is limited just like we are limited and therefore he could not tell them when he would return but he knows that the Father which is God in heaven knows and it's look it's a great mystery how do you reconcile that well in my mind is it's real simple in the sense that when Jesus was in the flesh he was just like us okay and so he is the example for us and so he was perfect in every single way now if he cannot know while he's in the flesh then neither can we know the day or the hour alright so in that sense he was limited and also in the sense that because he was in the flesh he also had to die because we also had to die you see what I'm saying he is in the flesh 
to be the example for us. Right? It wouldn't be right if while he was in the flesh that he knew uh, when he would return if we don't know when he will return. Right? It wouldn't be right that he um, wouldn't die in the flesh if we have to die in the flesh. So he came in the flesh to lead us, to guide us, to be the example for us. And so he died in the flesh and also he resurrected and so also will we that are born of God be resurrected and uh, changed in the twinkling in a moment in the twinkling of an eye when he returns all right so that's how I view it um, you know he, he's not a he's not Superman he's not a superhero he when he was in the flesh he was just like us all right now at the same time it's important to know that Jesus is God Almighty it says very plainly that God was manifest in the flesh God so who was who was manifest in the flesh God was manifest in the flesh in other words Jesus is God Almighty now we just read in that verse I just shared you. Let me go back real quick. There is one God, not two gods, not co-equal gods. All right, where are we at here? Did I go too far? No. Excuse me. Right there. For there is one God. Only there's one God. There's not two gods. So if God is manifest in the flesh, that's one God. So when Jesus was in the flesh, he's, there's still only one God. So when you think of Father and the Son, there's just one God. There's not two gods. There's not co-equal gods. I mean, this is a, we're not Mormons, right? Um, so just because we don't fully understand it doesn't mean uh, it's not true. Right now, I want you to consider this without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God, was I just there? Okay, anyways, without there, so there's no controversy, there's no doubting about it. It's a great mystery. That's what this verse is saying. It's a great mystery, so we can't fully know, nor can we know what we will be like uh, what's that verse I'm thinking of now I think it's in first John beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be see we can't know exactly everything there is to know but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. All right. So the the point here I'm making is we can't know every single thing. You have to get over yourself, I think. And boy, I'd like to know. I'd like to know, and I'd like to be able to go out there and blow the horn and and stand on the rooftops and and tell everybody, hey, he's going to be here at three o'clock this afternoon. That's not the case. So he's going to come at an hour. When we least expect it. I thought. Oh, I could be wrong. Let me see. Let me see. What verse is that? Now, he's going to come like a thief in the night. Right? Um, I don't know. What's that verse I'm thinking of here? But the day of hour, no, nobody knows. Uh, for you know not what hour the Lord comes. Let's see. Like uh, when the flood of Noah happened, right? Um, just like uh, when the floods came and that took them all by surprise. So also when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's going to take us all by surprise. Okay. And uh, now let's get into uh, this idea of co-equal gods. There's only one God. 
And I think um, we could go to Isaiah, but first let me go to Revelation here. And this should make it blatantly clear. Jesus says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ is Almighty God. All right. And then, of course, this is prophesied also in Isaiah 9 and numerous other places. Numerous other places. But um, in Isaiah 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting father the prince of peace now let's go to John and um, Jesus is having a conversation with Timothy I think it is or Thomas excuse me I forget all right so we go uh, to this conversation that they're having and says no man has seen the father show us uh, I believe it's Thomas he says show us the father am I wrong about that show us the father or Philip excuse me I was doubting myself just like Thomas doubting Thomas okay so he says how sayest thou then show us the father all right so uh, let me open this up here make this easier um, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen the Father, he that has seen me, has seen the Father. Excuse me. And how sayest thou, then show us the Father? He that has seen me, has seen the the Father. In other words, Jesus is the everlasting Father. All right. Now let's address this comment here, where he says um, that uh, there's none good but one. That is God. Um, so we go here. And Matthew, I guess we'll have to do this way. Matthew 19, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And then he goes on to uh, essentially tell him to keep the commandments and then he raises the standard to show this gentleman that he is not perfect and he needs a savior and of course this man rejected the idea that he needs a savior and the fact is we all need a savior the law is there as our schoolmaster to show us that we need a savior and therefore this, our schoolmaster is there to bring us to faith in Christ all right I mean it should be obvious if you know the law you know you're not perfect all right and then Jesus comes along and he raises the standard if you ha ain't figured it out by now okay that you can't you can't live up to the standard you need a savior we all do that's how God made us he made us so that we have this emptiness without the Savior and that we are only filled with the Savior which is the Lord Jesus Christ okay so one thing I want you to notice here is that there is no correcting the 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 rich young ruler or whatever the young man as it says here <clears throat> Jesus doesn't correct him he says to him, Why callest thou me good? 
He's not saying, don't call me good. I'm not good. Don't call me good. I'm not, you know, he doesn't say that at all. He's implying to him that, hey, if you're going to call me good, you recognize that I'm good, then you ought to recognize who I am. And of course, Jesus already knew that he didn't, that this uh, young man didn't recognize who he was. And he wasn't there seeking a savior. He was seeking uh, a way into eternal life. And of course, there's only one way, and that's by grace through faith. Okay, so I appreciate that that comment question right there. Um, again, let me reiterate that there's no way for us to fully understand how this whole thing works, and it's amazing. Uh, really is, but the bottom line is there is a God, and we're not God. All right, we can be one with God. God abides in us, and we in Him. But at the end of the day, we're not God. Right? All right. So again, let me also emphasize this: there is only one God. There is not a co-equal. There's not God the Father and God the Son as two gods. They are one God, one and the same. The God, there's God the Father above and the Son of God, which is the Savior for all mankind. And um, there was, I, I really don't want to use this analogy but um, perhaps uh, it might help in the sense that if you take water and you heat it up, it turns into vapor. Or if you freeze water, it turns into solid. So we got water that comes in three different forms, solid, liquid, and vapor. And so if, in a sense, if you apply that to God, I, I don't like doing this, but let me just give you something to think about so at the end of the day the vapor liquid and solid are still water and so you also apply that to God God in heaven uh, the Spirit of God and the man Christ Jesus it's all God even though it's in different forms it's still God it's still one God and so anyways I'll leave you with that um, I, I'm a little bit iffy about uh, you know making that analogy but uh, at the end of the day we don't fully understand everything if we did uh, we wouldn't need God all right but we do need God and that's uh, gonna be that's going to be the case until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. Okay. All right. Uh, have, if, if I have any, if I said something stupid, just let me know. Uh, if you need me to follow up or to elaborate or whatever, let me know. Appreciate the comments.